Now that we have our Hello World uh, going in you, it might be a good idea to take a little bit of a break and uh, figure out how to log things to the console. Because when we're working in JavaScript, uh, especially on the front end here with Rust, uh, there's going to be a limited ways that we can debug our code and sort of understand what we have and when we have it. Uh, if we try to do a log in our code here, uh, so if I try to do just like a print line or a debug uh, here, unfortunately, um, it's not going to be visible anywhere. If I go to my server, uh, which is sh you know showing our 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 runtime here, nothing's going to happen. I'm not going to see it come out here because it's running in the browser. And debug isn't something that runs in a browser. It's just going to be stripped away and not actually do anything. Luckily, there is a way for us to do a console.log. Um, so let's um, let's actually sort of get that get that set up for ourselves. We're going to be using a tool, a crate called glue to make things a lot simpler for ourselves. So in our cargo.tumble, we're going to add in glue. And uh, we're going to take the latest version of that. You know, let Rust Analyzer um, sort of like figure everything out, uh, analyze everything. And when it's ready, we're going to uh, create a new variable. So let's say it's something like um, uh, let name equals Brooks. Now I want to log this out to see, you know, did I set that variable name properly? I'm going to use log. And we can see here that there is now a log macro from glue. When I pull that in, glue now gives us access to the console and then the log. Uh, there are many, many things that glue gives us access to, which I really love glue. We can now use this as if it were just console.log. So I can just throw in name. And when we come back to here, we can see, hey, look, my name logged out. Um, we can all, there's many other ways that we can use console log as well, though. I could put in multiple things that are comma separated. Uh, just treat it like a function with an unlimited number of uh, items we can log out. So uh, my name is and that logs out as well. That's great. And this works for all the primitive types of values that we could possibly want to do. Numbers, uh, strings, stirs, um, but it doesn't work for objects. And that's because they have to make sure that they are strings um, or at least more primitive values when they go through log. Uh, so what would happen if we did have an object? Let's go ahead and create one really quickly. So we'll do, um, uh, we'll just create a struct. Uh, we're going to just call it data for right, or we'll call it my object. Um, we'll have a username, which is just going to be a string. And let's just do like a favorite language, which is also a string. I'm going to now set that up here. So let's do let uh, my object equals my object username. Uh, we can just grab name, no, not type name, the same name we have here, but we do need to to own this to turn it into a string. Uh, and favorite language, we're just going to say Rust and then to own that to turn it into a string. Now, if I were to attempt to uh, do another log here and add in my object, it's going to yell at us. It's going to say that, hey, we can't, uh, we can't convert this into a JS value. Uh, we just don't know how to do that. Uh, what we need to do is convert it into some kind of string, but that also uh, keeps its, um, its structure intact. And there is a thing that helps us do that. 
uh, CERDE is specifically used for serializing uh, structures, arrays, vectors, whatever we want into stringified objects. Like for example, JSON is what we're looking for. So we're going to bring in two crates for, or yeah, two crates for this, uh, CERDE and CERDE JSON. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the latest version of each. We're going to let Rust Analyzer uh, analyze this. Great. And now for this struct, we need to now tell it that it can be serialized. So we're going to derive, uh, want serialize, and I always end up just putting deserialize on there whenever I put a serialize. Uh, that's for like bringing something from a string back into a struct. It's not really necessary here, but uh, I just, I, I, I don't know, it's a habit. I, I like to do it. Um, okay, well, we're still getting an error because it can't, it doesn't know to now call like the serialize on it. And this is where sort of a JSON comes in. I can now say, I want sort of JSON. Uh, we're going to do a two string. I have several options here. I'm going to do a two string pretty and uh, we're going to put a reference to the my object. Uh, let's see, convert from, oh, result. Yeah, two string pretty or two string both have results which means that I can't actually just do this on its own. We're gonna to have to return a result. Unfortunately, because of this required return of an HTML, I can't question mark it. Uh, I can't handle that error nicely. Now, I suppose that I can just wrap this in like an if let error, you know, if let okay, um, convert that into, into the string and then handle it. Uh, or we could just use the easy way and unwrap it. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times we do find unwraps being just used in, in front end framework land right now. Uh, maybe that will change in the future, uh, but for right now, we just sort of have to accept that. Uh, there's no errors. So let's go and take a look and we see our object being uh, being printed out here and it's very nice and uh, pretty as we see. It's multiple lines, makes it a little bit easier to read and understand. Anyways, hopefully this will help you in your debugging efforts when you're working with uh, U.RS and uh, any other front end uh, frameworks because Glue can work with pretty much everything. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.